Hi everyone. So the fundamental concept to understand in quantum mechanics is the wave function itself. So in this video we will discuss a couple of things. Uh, the first one is some terminologies associated with the wave function itself. There are certain names that you need to uh, remember. And then the second part is we want to talk about what the wave function looks like mathematically and that all the conclusions that we derive from the wave function is really based on uh, math uh, and equations. And then the third part we want to talk about is how can we use the wave function to calculate the energy of the electron. Okay, that's really an important component of uh, what we're doing right here. This particular uh, activity of solving the wave function to get the energy is also known as solving the Schrodinger equation. So what exactly is the wave function? The wave function is also known as orbitals for a particular atom. Okay, And the easiest way to think about this is to imagine the wave function or the orbital as the region in space where the electron is located. So if you imagine that here's a nucleus and then you imagine that there is some region in space surrounding the nucleus, let's say around this area right here, and in this particular region in space, you can find the electron with some probability, as we'll discuss later, that would be known as one of the orbitals of that atom. Now, the wave function is a three-dimensional function, as you can imagine, because the atom is a three-dimensional object. So as a result, the wave function is a mathematic, mathematical function that is composed of x, y, and z, which represents the three-dimensional Cartesian coordinate. But because most of the time the atom is represented as a spherical object, in other words, something that looks like a sphere, most often people actually don't use the Cartesian coordinate to represent the wave function, but they use something called the spherical polar coordinate, which has the following form. Where psi, in this case, is a function of three parameters, r, theta, and phi, and these are basically similar in some extent to x, y, z. It's just that they describe different part of a sphere. So here is actually a representation of a spherical polar coordinate system versus a Cartesian coordinate system. So you can see here that R really represent, if this were the nucleus, the way we think about it is if you have a sphere located at the center of the coordinate, this would be your nucleus. And then the position of the electron, for example, here is identified by three parameters. R is the distance for the electron to the uh, nucleus, and then the other two are just angles that represent this particular distance, so you can identify where the position of that electron is. So theta is one angle, and then phi is the other angle. The last thing I want to discuss before we get into the mathematical form of the wave function is that the word orbital is not the same as Bohr orbit. Okay, so you might you don't want to have the same impression of orbital uh, as you do for the Bohr orbit. Orbital, again, is a wave representation of the region in space where the electron could be found, whereas Bohr orbit is a very classical uh, representation of uh, an elliptical path where the electron could be found. So mathematically, the wave function is actually very complex, as shown on this slide right here. So here is some of the wave functions that we can see for a particular atom. And it's, pro it's probably a little hard for you to see here, but this is also on your slide. These functions look very complicated, okay? So they have a lot of components. They have alpha here. They have e to the power of uh, certain exponents. And then they have h um, bar here, which is Planck's constant that's evaluated at a, at a certain, with a certain value. Okay, so this is clearly not very easy to calculate and really to fully understand how to use the wave function to perform calculations, you will need to learn higher level math, which includes differential equations and linear algebra. At UCLA, there is a one quarter or ten week course which deals with just using the simplest forms of the wave function to calculate the properties of hydrogen. Okay, so this is really not something we can do in this class. But what we will do is describe some of the conclusions that people who have done these calculations obtain and then use them to apply to atoms and electrons. Okay, just as a reminder that our main goal really at the end is to calculate the energy of the electron in an atom. Now, why is this useful? 
The reason is because the energy values that we obtain from this calculation can be used to explain the physical properties of the electron. And knowing the physical properties of the electron will allow us to predict what the electron will do as far as reactivity is concerned in a certain chemical reaction. If we know the wave function for a particular atom, in order to calculate the energy levels of the electron, what we have to do is perform a mathematical operation. So earlier I mentioned that these are the form of the wave function. So each of this represents the wave function for a particular location of the electron, uh, a certain distance away from the nucleus. In order to use these functions to obtain energy, what you have to do is apply a series of mathematical operations. And that operation is called a Hamiltonian, which consists of the following two functions, this and that. So the wave function is being operated on by the Hamiltonian. Well, the Hamiltonian is just a series of mathematical instruction. So you can see that this is one form of the Hamiltonian. And what that's saying is take the second derivative with respect to x of the uh, wave function and then add to that the second derivative with respect to y of the wave function and so on and so forth. Again, this is math that's way too complicated for our level of understanding at this point, but that's just to give you a flavor of what exactly they're doing when uh, we are uh, calculating energy for the wave function. So the Hamiltonian itself is a mathematical function that represents the kinetic energy and the potential energy component of a particular electron. So once we apply the Hamiltonian operation on a wave function, what we get is the kinetic energy and the potential energy for that particular electron in that wave function. And of course, kinetic energy and potential energy added up together gives you the internal energy for that electron. And that's why we can use these energy values to relate to the properties of the electron. All the conclusions we would draw about the electronic structure of the atom in this chapter really comes about from doing this type of calculation. So I want you to understand that what we are saying later on as far as valence electrons, noble gas configuration, and so on and so forth, they're all based from doing these calculations. However, unfortunately, we can't do these calculations ourselves because the math is a little too complicated. Now, the last thing I want to mention here is just the fact that when we are doing this Hamiltonian operation on the wave function, okay, that's written as this symbol right here, which is H, is the Hamiltonian operator applied to the wave function. And the answer there gives you the energy value of the wave function and the wave function itself again. So applying the Hamiltonian on the wave function gives you the energy of the wave function. This is what we refer to as solving the Schrodinger equation for that particular wave function. In the next video, we would discuss what we get out of doing this operation, which is a series of numbers known as quantum numbers.